Hello, our church. Welcome to our online service. So glad that you could join in with us for today. And we're going to be going into a time of worship. But before that, let's just pray. So, Father God, thank you so much for everyone who's here. I just pray uh, your blessing over today's service, that your presence would be with us as we worship you. And we just pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's sing. Of the goodness of 
children tell their children let this be their memory that all my treasure was in heaven and you were everything
Hope that you enjoyed that time of worship. And also, I hope that you enjoyed last week's service where we had Pastor Fiona and Michael sharing about their own experiences and what the Lord has taught them about following His leading, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, of listening to the Lord and obeying Him. And, you know, that's one of the things that's really blessed me in uh, walking with Pastor Fiona has been that encouragement to, in everything that I should always be listening to the Lord um, and asking the Lord if this is, um, you know, for wisdom, about um, help with decision making, and you know that's what I really wanted to focus on for today was when we listen when we um, if we want to live by the Spirit we need to be listening for the voice of God and so we're going to be looking at um, a passage in the Old Testament about um, just how one of the prophets one of the great prophets in the Old Testament um, came to know the Lord or came to know the voice of the Lord and how the Lord introduced himself all right and so before we do that let's just pray so, Father God, I just pray that you would bless our service today and that um, for the word that we're going to read, that you would just really speak to our hearts and help us to long for you and to seek after you with all of our hearts um, and help us to know your voice better and also to hear you and to be obedient to you in our everyday lives. So we just pray that you would speak to us in the way that you know how to speak to our hearts. And we pray all of that in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, and so the passage of scripture we're going to be looking at is 1 Samuel chapter 3. So why don't you turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And uh, we're going to start from verse 1 all the way up to verse 10 or 11. And it says, Now the young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and laid down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, um, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day, and the Lord goes on to uh, speak to Samuel concerning uh, Israel and the house of Eli. Um, and so looking at that story, I really love how it's Samuel, you know, he's a boy who's um, lived in the temple. Uh, his um, his life is dedicated unto the Lord. Um, there's a great story that we've gone through before where his mother, Hannah, um, you know, Samuel was miraculously born. And so um, Samuel lived in the temple and he grew up there uh, and was learning under Eli. And yet we see here that in verse 7, it said, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord has had not yet been revealed to him and so here we see Samuel's first encounter with the word of the Lord and how the Lord chose to introduce himself what um, what an amazing story and he was able to hear the audible voice of God at that which is really awesome and it reminds me of what we heard last week from Pastor Fiona when she was sharing about her first experience with the Lord um, about hearing the voice of God about it feeling that embrace from him and although not all of us will hear the Lord in the same way, um, but I think there's a lot of exp uh, there's a lot of principles that we can get from this passage, and we can apply it to our own relationship with Him. And so we're going to be looking at three principles uh, in looking at this passage. And uh, number one is that the Lord may speak to us in times that we least expect it. The Lord may speak to us in times that we least expect it. And so here we see that Samuel, he was under Eli. So perhaps, 
you know, it might be reasonable to assume that if the Lord were to give a vision or a specific word, that it would be through Eli. But the Lord knows and um, the Lord saw Samuel. And for one reason or another, you know, the Lord is perfect in his wisdom and his timing. Um, but he decided to speak to Samuel then, at that night, uh, when Samuel was lying down. You know, it wasn't necessarily when Samuel was awake or, uh, you know, he could have been awake when lying down. But uh, the Lord chose to, spoke to speak to Samuel when he was lying down. And in a lot of ways, the Lord might also speak to us in times that we might not expect it. You know, it might not be all the time that the Lord will give us a specific word when we're uh, watching, um, you know, online serve, online church every week. Or maybe we would might expect it when during our quiet time in the morning or when we're praying at nighttime before the Lord. But the Lord might want to speak to us, um, you know, maybe in the middle of the night like Samuel here. Or maybe uh, when we're at work or in those times that we are in context that we don't necessarily expect the Lord to speak. And that's part of the growing process for us and for me too is in learning how to involve the Lord in every aspect of our lives. That even if I were interrupted during sleeping, um, that I would be able to ask the Lord, okay, Lord, what would you like me to pray about? And, you know, I had that earlier this week where I, you know, wasn't able to sleep until I um, was able to ask the Lord, okay, Lord, uh, you know, it was for a personal thing, but at the same time, the Lord helped me to know what to pray for. And after I prayed that, I was able to fall asleep um, again. And so that was just this past week. And so you might have those experiences with the Lord where he might uh, want to speak to you something very specifically. Um, but it may be, yeah, maybe it's like Samuel where, you know, you're trying to go to sleep. And so let's look out for those things uh, where we involve the Lord and we're actively listening for his voice, um, you know, no matter what the time of day is. For Moses, it was in the burning bush. You know, he was just tending after the sheep. Um, and the Lord knows the right times uh, to get to us, to get to our hearts and to speak to us in a way uh, that is effective and meaningful to us as well. You know, there's a verse in Romans chapter 14, verses 8, and it says, For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And so um, that's something that no matter what when in our lives, that we belong to Christ. When we become part of his family, we belong to the Lord. And so let's make sure and we're opening that we're opening our lives up to the Lord for him to speak to us, no matter the context, no matter the time or place that we are open to the Lord and ready to say like Samuel, speak Lord for your servant hears that we will be available, that we would avail ourselves to the Lord to listen to him. All right. And so that's point number one that he may speak to us when we least expect it. Number two, the Lord is patient with us in our journey of listening to him. So the Lord is patient with us. I think that's one of the really beautiful things that I see when reading this passage is how the Lord um, just really, all he does is he says, Samuel. He doesn't expand and say, oh, oh yeah, by the way, this isn't Eli. He just says, Samuel. There's, um, there's, it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny, you know, like uh, that we see Samuel and he gets confused. He thought it was Eli speaking, um, but the, it was really the Lord. And even the second time, the Lord just says, Samuel, he called again. Uh, and Samuel rose again, thinking that it was Eli. And finally, after um, after the third time and uh, Samuel came and Eli finally eventually uh, realized, hey, I think the Lord is actually calling you. And so finally, the Lord says another time. Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel um, is able to respond. And from there, the Lord engages more with Samuel and shares him with shares with him the vision. And also, um, Samuel grows up to be a prophet of the Lord. And so I think it's really cool to see that process, that the Lord doesn't impose himself on us, that he's uh, he was patient with Samuel, uh, even though Sam, you know, Samuel took a bit of time to catch on. And one of the, that's kind of how it is with us as well, is that as we progress in our walk with the Lord, um, he's always calling out to us, but he's patient with us knowing that we might um, need some time or we might need repetition to hear from him. But how great it is if we can always respond to him, you know, after that growing process, if we can learn to respond to him quickly and to be um, open to what the Lord has to say. Um, but the Lord is very patient with us. You know, one of the things that, 
uh, one of the analogies that I found helpful for my own life is in um, as it relates to music because it's like with relate as it relates to hearing right um, because one of the things that I'm able to do now after playing guitar and piano um, for a while is to um, get pretty good at guessing the right pitch of a tone and so I don't have perfect pitch but after um, a while of playing, I have grown to recognize um, the way certain notes sound, whether it be on the guitar or piano. So usually um, each instrument, if you didn't know, like guitar or piano, uh, well, of course, you know, they sound differently. And um, what makes them sound different is uh, what's called the timbre. And so each instrument has its own timbre. And so what I've learned um, as I've played so much is that I've grown to recognize. So if, uh, if you play a D on a guitar string, um, I would my mind would call back on all the times that I've heard the note D, right? And so my brain just knows that that's the, that's the note D, or at least it's close to it. You know, it's not perfect, but I can usually guess uh, with it pretty close. Um, and that's something that's pretty amazing to me. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, when I was a kid, I really had no ability to do any of that. I had no idea um, about the the way notes related to each other. But as I've gotten more familiarized with the notes, it has allowed me to recognize it. Um, and so although I might not be gifted with perfect pitch, I think it's very cool how I was able to um, just learn through familiarity. And that learning through familiarity is something that I think it can relate to our, the way that we hear the voice of the Lord. That as we grow more and more in Christ and as we uh, learn, as, as we uh, learn to listen to the Lord, um, hopefully that helps us, you know, that will help us discern um, between um, what is the voice of the Lord and what is not the voice of the Lord. And that's something that's really important. Um, but as we grow, uh, that's something that I pray that we will all be able to um, grow more in because it's such a blessing uh, to know the voice of the Lord. And we would recognize it when we hear it and that it will be refreshing to us. In John chapter 10, verses 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And so each one of us, if we belong to the Lord, um, we know his voice. It says it right there in the scripture. And so it's just a matter of growing in the Lord and um, growing deeper in our relationship with him. And, you know, a lot of the times that the Lord speaks to me as well is through his scriptures, is that... Um, scriptures that I might have memorized four years ago, suddenly they come up to my mind and it's very relevant for um, the situation I'm in in my life. And so I really encourage you that you would um, study scripture, that you would memorize um, some passages that the Lord brings to your heart um, and that you would store it in your heart. Um, and the Lord may very well, um, you know, not only is it beneficial for you to meditate upon those words uh, for this present season in your life, the, the Lord may very well bring it to your remembrance in the future and also help you. Um, maybe you can pass it on to someone else who might need that word um, in a future time. All right. And uh, one more scripture from John, and it says from John chapter 16, verses 13, it says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And so we have the Holy Spirit, um, to sh um, who's the voice of the Lord to us, who is our companion, who is our guide, and he will speak um, and he will declare to us the things that are to come. And he will also speak and guide us into all truth. And so it's a process with the Lord. And thankfully, um, we have the Holy Spirit and he will never leave us or forsake us. And we have him and he will guide us. And so I'm really excited. And I hope that you're excited to grow in that process of walking with the Lord um, because we really need him. You know, that leads us to our third point is that um, we really need uh, that the Lord is waiting for us to seek him and um, to welcome his voice and instruction into our lives um, because we really need the Lord. Um, we need his voice in our lives. Sometimes um, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and in uh, Galatians 5 verse 16, it says, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Um, sometimes in the flesh, we feel like we can act independently of God, that we don't need him, um, that we, um, that we, sometimes when I'm in the flesh, maybe I'd rather, you know, I'm just too tired. I don't want to um, listen to what 
to seek the Lord. I want to just scroll on uh, YouTube or something like that, right? Um, but that's not the way of the Lord. That you know, I just pray that all of us can learn to listen at every step with the Lord, um, no matter as you're sharing, no, no matter what context we're in, uh, no matter the time or the place that we would really be responding to the Lord. We saw earlier that when Samuel um, finally invited the Lord, he said, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. When he finally said that, then the Lord was able to, um, well, then the Lord chose um, to show more and to speak more to Samuel. And I'm sure that it was a process too after that, that Samuel was um, eager to hear the voice of the Lord. And so in the same way, I just pray that all of us can be eager to hear the voice of the Lord um, rather than the voices of, um, of the media, of our favorite TV show, that above all that we would seek to be excited about the voice of the Lord. Um, you know, I'm going to end uh, with this passage from Isaiah chapter 55. So Isaiah chapter 55. And I just pray that, um, you know, we would really be encouraged to do that. So let's turn to Isaiah chapter 55. And uh, yeah, so we're going to read, we're going to read the whole chapter together. Okay, and it says from chapter, uh, verse 1. It says, come, everybody who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall be call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that you did not know, you shall run oh no you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God and out and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For ye shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Okay, wow, that was a great passage. And um, one of the things that I just really wanted to emphasize in sharing that whole passage was um, just in the majesty of the Lord and looking at what his voice can do, that the powerful, um, how the Lord is very powerful, that what he speaks um, comes to pass, that uh, if we read in verse 13, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, that the Lord um, has the power to transform and to change our lives. And so let's remember that as we learn to, as we are seeking um, to hear the voice of the Lord, that um, we are, we are able to be in relationship with the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who controls um, all of life and the whole universe. He holds the whole earth in the palm of his hands. And so Let's remember and listen to what the Lord is saying, that he's inviting us, that everyone who's thirsty, it says in verse 1, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without price, that the Lord um, has invited us to this feast, that we get to walk with him in relationship with him, and let's make sure that we're not spending our money um, for that which does not, uh, for that which is not bread, and our labor for that which does not satisfy, because only the Lord can satisfy our heart's desires, and only in walking with Him will we find full, full will we find fulfillment 
in um, in this life. And so I just pray that all of us would be able to grow in that and that we would really um, cherish those moments with the Lord that we have with him, that we, when we hear him, that we would heed his voice and that we would listen and um, that we would um, seek to grow more and more. Um, it says in verse six, seek the Lord while he might may be found, call upon him while he is near. And so, um, yeah, you know, I hope that it was a bit short. That's uh, the word, but I pray that you would be able to revisit some of those passages. So it was first Samuel chapter three and Isaiah chapter 55, and that we would, uh, really, um, welcome the Lord's voice in our lives this week and continue to, um, walk that path of, listening and obeying and um, making sure that we're never untethering ourselves from the Lord, that, but that we're always keeping close to him because only, um, you know, because by his side, there is safety and there is joy and there is peace. Um, like it says in this uh, chapter in 50, Isaiah 55, that um, verse 12, for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And um, so, yeah, I just want to pray that um, over us. And so before we end off, let's just pray together. Uh, so Father God, I want to thank you um, for these passages of scripture that we have to encourage us, to really point us towards you, um, that you are our creator, you are our God, you are our King, Lord, and we want to, um, that whether, that in our whole lives, God, we want to be available to you, to listen to you, to listen to your voice, God. And we just want to, um, God, we want to say sorry for the times that we have not. Um, and God, we just pray that you would point out the areas in our lives that we need to surrender to you, that you want to speak to us and that you want to make um, joyful and peace and um, that you want to really bless God. And so we just pray over all the areas in our lives that you would really speak to us, God, and that your voice um, would transform um, those areas in our lives. So we just pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, and that's it for today's service. I hope that you were encouraged from the message today. Remember that if you have any prayer requests that you can always uh, message us on Instagram or by email and we'd be happy to pray for you. Um, but yeah, I hope that you have a great week and remember that you are loved and you belong.